All right, back to the days of vapor heating. I want to tell you about the boiler return trap because there are still many of them out there. A lot of people get confused when they look at them because they don't know what it is. And also it's named trap, which it's not. So it's not an aptly named device. It's actually a mechanical condensate pump. They came in different shapes and sizes, but they all did the same thing. So let's look at one. This one was made by Hoffman. It's here. And over here we've got this with this uh, return line coming back from the radiator. So there's a steam line coming in here and an exhaust line that's coming over the top. So this is the boiler return trap and this is the receiver and air vent. Now this is going out to the radiators, the steam line. This is coming back from the radiators. So the condensate is coming out of radiators that have steam traps on them, thermostatic traps. The condensate bypasses this line and goes back into the boiler. This exhaust line is equalizing the end of the dry return, coming back from the radiators, into the boiler return trap. So hang on a minute. This is the air vent for the whole building. This little thing here. Very, very small, very easy to miss, but essential. Looks like that. It's a three-quarter inch tapping, and if you remove the cap, what you see in there is a ball. And that ball was designed to produce vacuum in the days when we were burning coal. So the, the steam, as it pushed the air ahead of itself, would make the ball pop up, the ball would seat, and then when the steam condensed, you'd get vacuum. So unless you're burning coal, I would remove that ball. So I would find this, get a needle nose pliers, just unscrew the top, take the ball out, put the cap back on, put the, put the ball in your pocket, add it to your collection. Now it can't make vacuum. So the receiver in the oven on the inside looks like this. What we have here is just a flow valve, like a like a ball cock in a toilet. Your vent screws into here. And this is down there. It's normally down. Venting is going to go through there, coming down here. And the only time this would go up would be if water somehow managed to come up this line, because we don't want this to spill. So that's there to prevent spillage. And the only way water could come up this line would be if somebody in the coal-fired days left the ash pit door open and the fire flared up and you had too much heat, too much pressure, water would back out of the boiler. So if this is there and it's fine, leave it alone. Don't change any of this stuff. This guy over here, I'm going to explain to you in a minute, but the way to know whether it's working is when it's running, you feel the steam line. It should be hot. This line over here to the touch should be cold. If this line is hot, something's wrong should not be steam in this line. So here's what we just looked at. There's the boiler return trap. This is that exhaust, uh, the receiver of air vent right in the top. So the steam is going out. Here's the near boiler piping. It's going out to the radiators. It's coming back here from the radiators. And notice how we have 19 inches from the end of the main down to the water line. Now 19 inches represents about a half pound of static weight. So that means that as long as the boiler is operating at 8 ounces of pressure or less, and that's what we call vapor heating, when it's 8 ounces of pressure or less, there'll be enough weight in this line to overcome that check valve. It can open that check valve and open this check valve over here, this inboard, the inboard and the outboard check valve, these two here. It can do that because this is equalized to that. So this is a U-tube right here. So the 19 inches of weight We'll open this check valve, open that check valve, put the water in the boiler, as long as there's at least, or not more than, eight ounces of pressure in the boiler, one half pound. But if the pressure should go above one half pound, what happens is the boiler pressure shoves back against this check valve, so it closes it. Now over here, we suddenly have enough weight to open this check valve, but we can't get the inboard check valve open because of the excessive pressure of the boiler keeping it closed. So the water just shrugs its shoulders and it says, okay, well, I'll, I'll just go up this line over here and I'll enter the boiler return trap. Now, what, once it gets in there, what it's going to find is this. There's a float and the float is operating two valves. It's mechanical. One is a steam line, which is normally closed. The other is that exhaust line, which is normally open. So the float comes in here. I mean, the water comes in here, raises the float. And when it gets to a certain point, these valves go clip-clop, they reverse action. The steam line opens, the exhaust line closes. Suddenly, steam is in this line. It pushes down on the water, shoves it down, shutting that check valve, opening that check valve, and putting the water back in the boiler. Now, as the water level goes down inside the trap, the float goes down with it. And once again, clip-clop, steam side shuts, return side opens the exhaust line, and you're ready for another cycle. 
So this thing will cycle up and down and up and down. So it's not a steam trap, it's a mechanical condensate pump. They are remarkably long-lived and, and they came in all different shapes and sizes. This is one made by Dunham Bush. There's the boiler return trap, there's the vent, and there's the two check valves. And when you look at this thing close up, cut it open, you can see there's the steam and the, water, and the exhaust line, and there's the float, that's all that's in there. And I have a contractor, actually a wholesaler friend in Pennsylvania, who figured out that if one of these things, you know, fails because, the, you know, the valves are not seating properly, or the linkage breaks, rather than replace it with a boiler feed pump and steam traps and a whole lot of expense, what he does is he has the contractor rip the guts out of it, and then he takes a probe type low water cutoff and he sticks it in any one of the holes. I mean, they, they all had plenty of tappings in them. And he gets a solenoid valve that would be normally closed, a small solenoid valve that he would put on the steam line going to this, and another solenoid valve that would be normally open, and he puts that on the exhaust line. And he wires those through a switching relay to the low water cutoff. So when the water comes up, and now it's just using this, this body as, as a place to uh, gather water, when it touches the probe, it makes the electrical connection through the switching relay and reverses the connections or, or the signal to the to the uh, two solenoid valves. So the steam line opens, the exhaust line closes, and the whole thing works. So you get another 250,000 miles out of it for a couple of hundred bucks.